Let's see here. Where should we start? Should I, should I, you know, break the ice? Go ahead. Sure. So, um, I've been wondering, working with the Crisis Engine, how, how is it with technicality? How is it, I mean, is it difficult? Is it worse or better? It's incredibly easy, really. You don't really even need to go into any sort of coding at all or even modeling or texturing. What you do is you use a real-time interface where you move the camera around and then you open up either a database plane or a flow graph code to do what you want. So whereas in Hammer, you'd have to basically chop out the area you want, code out the sequence, and then hope it works and patch it and polish it. In CryEngine 2, you drop an area box, and when you enter the area, you can make it do anything you want in an intuitive user interface. So that's the extent of the coding goes and making the map was really just dropping vegetation around and texturing it was surprisingly easy enough that i covered all of that by myself i didn't even need a team with me so um it sounds like you've worked with the the hammer editor before um what's your experience with that uh my experience with that um i was originally going to help out with uh sequel to zombie master but that never turned into anything mm -hmm. so i just went into light sure. mapping with uh alien swarm uh this half-life 2 in general just to uh knock around with some friends but i've never released anything on it and i don't plan on it i'm not really a fan of hammer or how it works yeah i've heard bad things about it yeah um, hey man hey man <laughs> got a hammer fan right here you know i stick close to you <laughs> so, adrian do you have any more questions Oh, um, what, what's the most difficult aspect working with the uh, cry engine? You know? uh, the most difficult aspect is, well, I would say an impossible aspect is animating people. You can't actually do anything that's third person, which restricts the story pretty heavily. You got to get creative with it. But something that you can do in it that's incredibly difficult is actually, um, let me think. Uh, yeah, it's not really a difficult engine. I can't think of anything that's technically hard to do that you can't learn within a few minutes of digging through the menus. But oh, wow. probably advanced flow graph scripting that is stable because flow graph can be very unstable if you have too many nodes connecting to each other. So I would say the most difficult thing to do is getting rid of the area you were in and loading the area ahead of you stably without the game crashing. It's very difficult to balance that. I agree. It's not easy in Hammer either. So there's there's that kind of similarity between the game. Yeah, games. yeah. So Crisis themselves had to split the game into like I think thirty or forty micro levels just to get it to not crash when you loaded the level out. Wow. Yeah. Um, I know. I know. There's been a lot of reception. It seems to be positive reception to your mod. How do you how do you react to that? Well, overall, the team is very happy to see the work we put into it just get positive. People like what they play. The biggest bit of attention has been on the story, and we're all very happy with that. We put a lot of time into just perfecting the kind of Lovecraftian horror mystery story that rarely ever goes into modding. And we were happy to see that well-received rather than go over the heads of some of our players. So... Overall, we're very happy with being featured on the front page, getting generous amounts of downloads, and though feedback has been surprisingly light, the score itself has been creeping up to the high nine range. So overall, we're very proud of our work and very happy that people like playing it. Yeah, I think that uh, oh, the PC community is a little more well-read than we give them credit for sometimes. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. And on that note, I want to ask you about... Uh, you said that you mentioned that uh, Lovecraft inspired you a lot, and that's those sort of surreal, uh, cerebral horror stories. And uh, what what about the work, like, or his work, influenced you to put that into the game, or what about it that did you like, or you know? Well, with Lovecraft, I just I like the atmosphere he creates when he writes his characters because he takes it in a very direct approach where somehow in his narratives he just fills it with so much detail and so much care into the work that you can know all about the world he's writing in in a few paragraphs and even if you sometimes he starts a story out like Newport did where you know the fate of the protagonist already you're still intrigued and interested just to follow along to see how mm -hmm. his story unfolds and Lovecraft did that arguably better than Stephen King or Block or anybody else did and that kind of inspiration of 
very unusual sort of take of character writing was what influenced me most about him. So you're uh, doing this solo, right? Or do you have a team? Uh, I have Jason working for me on cutscenes and two voice actors. Well, one voice actress, one voice actor, and that's it. And uh, music so, composed. So I'm the only modding team itself yeah, besides so Jason. Did you um, put the story together yourself, or was it something that you had, like, bumping around in your head before you made the mod? Or A little bit of both. I had the character bumping around in uh, just short stories. I've used him before. Edgar Gray, the... Uh, the antagonist, the villain of the project, mm -hmm. but the hero and the general story I had to think of on the spot. And I'm the only writer in the project. Yeah. All right, cool. So did you think it up on the spot or did you kind of like have the, the main, the plot worked out before you started, you know, mapping and texturing and whatnot? I had to think that part up on the spot. Yeah. I got to mapping first, then I just wanted to turn it into a project. So I had to cook up the, the story itself as I went along. All right, cool. I, um, I got a couple questions. Um, you, you said that you really like the Lovecraftian type of stories. And uh, what, what makes you go with that instead of a typical um, action hero story or something more alternative? Well, I just, when growing up, I never got into that whole kind of story. Just nothing clicked with me about the fantasy story the action hero story the rpg story but mm. i just l liked the uh closeness and realness of lovecraftian horror that it just stuck with me all the way up to this point that like i don't believe in any kind of amusement park horrors where there's jump scares and uh lights turned off like nightmare house or something mm -hmm. yeah. but the Call of Cthulhu or the frictional games like Penumbra or Amnesia, that's the kind of horror I'm attracted yeah. to way more. Mm -hmm. The psychological yeah. horror. Yeah, the psychological horror. Stuff that makes you think as well as be afraid of what's going on in a surreal yeah, and be way. be afraid of what you're not seeing as well. Exactly. And into the scene yeah. as well as, you know, yeah, what... just boogeyman with ten eyes and blah, blah, blah. Silent exactly. Hill 4. <laughs> <laughs> I love that game. The Silent Room. Hill 2, man. It's the scariest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so what made you choose the cry engine over the source engine or, uh, the ID tech four engine on, uh, doom three? Well, I'm not working with ID tech four. I'm only using cry engine two. And I picked that because as I mentioned previously, hammer has given me a lot of problems with linearity and a small scale. I wanted, when I made, uh, Worry of Newport. I wanted to make something big, very detailed, and very atmospheric that players could feel immersed in. And most importantly, I wanted to avoid loading screens entirely, so the gameplay never got uh, paused. So I took on CryEngine 2 to try to make that happen, because with source mods, as you know, that there are chunks of levels interspersed with loading screens and different startups and so forth. But with CryEngine 2, the entire thing is done without a single change in area or a single loading screen. And that alone just really sold me on it. And then I found out later on, the atmosphere in CryEngine 2 is incredible. Um, for example, in Part 2 of Warrior Newport, I've, I created six or seven distinct environments without a single loading screen. We got uh, Winter Forests, the Ocean, Newport Colony. We have the deserts of uh, Iran. We have jungles of South America, and all of that is done in the same engine with very few changes. So it just was very artistic and helped us achieve our goal more than Hammer or ID Tech would have. That sounds really impressive, actually. Um, were there any complications during development? Uh, the biggest complication was getting the ball rolling on the project, actually. During development, the only hassle we had was getting uh, cutscenes to work when you walked through an area because... You couldn't start the game with cutscenes, so we kind of had to find workarounds of our own. But overall, the development was very, very short and very, very stable, so we were happy to not have any fatal errors or change in teams. Awesome. That's that, that's really awesome that you guys could do so much with the, the CryEngine. And, uh, with such a small team, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. overall impressive. Yeah, I'm just looking through all the screenshots and the footage and it's just it's amazing like the cry engine is like it's almost like an amplifier you can just get a couple people and make exactly like, a exactly 
I, I always ask this question to everyone I interview. Um, what feature would you like to add to your uh, your mod, regardless of restriction? I would have liked to add um, more of a cinematic narrative to the story with third-person models, with cutscenes, with interaction, and flashbacks like that. And as I told before, it's impossible in CryEngine 2. Mm -hmm. So that's something I would have liked to do. Most of all, that people who work with ID Tech or uh, Hammer have the luxury of using. Mm -hmm. Well, um, do you guys have any other questions? Uh, I'm pretty much all out. Adrian, uh, I, I had a question about. Like, um, I, I I was wondering because Crisis and and the CryEngine is very um, visually mm -hmm. demanding. You know, there yes. there are only a certain number of computers that can run it and actually play it successfully? Has it had yes. any complications with development or with release or reception at all? Not at all. We've actually, well, I actually have worked on an optimization engine and the inside of uh, CryEngine 2 through Flowgraph that has made the game be less demanding than at times even Half-Life 2 Episode 2. What we did was create each area in a limited square of, I think, 500 feet on the skybox. So a big forest would be an illusion. It would just be the skybox and tree brushes, and the players wouldn't notice that this area is 100 miles away on the game map than the last forest they were in because it's seamlessly loaded without any loading screens. So what I was able to do was as each scene or so hopped along where the old scene was unloaded, I could keep the RAM count, the CPU count, and the stress on a bare minimum while keeping the graphics sky high. Wow. That's impressive. Yeah. It, it, that actually what you've just said reminds me a lot of like what Valve does and there's something to be said for the linear gameplay where you can make people more immersed in it even though you don't have a whole lot of options exactly it just comes to uh, artistic choice and how you want to uh, give the illusion the area is expansive where it's just linear in, in my opinion I, I kind of like the uh, the seamless loading idea um, I, I know Portal 2 did it in a different way, you know, when you go down into the chutes or whatever, uh, every time after you complete a chamber, it loads. And yeah. that's that's really smart because, you know, you think about it as you're going to a different level and not just, you know, physically within the game, you know. It's, yeah, it's loading pacing. a different level. Pacing. Exactly. And uh, um, Fallout 3 and New Vegas kind of does it, but they still have their small loading screens, like when yeah, you go into do. a building. Yeah, but overall, the the vast expanse of the general outside the wasteland is, you know, already loaded for you. Yes, yeah. seamlessly uh, rendered for you. Um, have you ever thought of doing it on Fallout, the Fallout engine, or was that even an option? It's not. Well, it might be an option. I haven't really looked at Game Biro that much. The only thing that I know about it is that Game Biro is unbelievably glitchy. So I don't know if it would lend itself well to a project that is supposed to be as polished as Newport's mm. design approach was. Yeah, when you because, have, when sorry to interrupt, but when you have Bethesda no like like releasing a game that still has glitches just hiding in every corner of the exactly. This and it'd probably take like a hundred years to iron them all out. And, exactly. Yeah. I, I personally don't know that much about the Fallout engine, but um, but what I did know was that uh, there was the seamless loading, or you know, mm -hmm. it wasn't seamless loading, but it was the preloaded uh, vas wastelands, like I said. Yeah, I'm sure the yeah, same I... seamless result could have been made with Newport and Game Biro, but also the glitchiness and the substantial drop yeah. in graphics clarity would have ruined some yeah, immersion yeah. for people. And you would have needed definitely a, a larger team and a lot oh, more yeah. people. Oh, yeah. Skill. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Stuff to go under the hood and see where exactly it was exactly. broken. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a, thing, a, sh a shame Bethesda can't, uh, you know, fix all of that... Uh, all that glitches and uh, all the bugs and stuff like that, because I'm I'm really looking forward to Skyrim and mods for that. Oh yeah, definitely. That's Skyrim is like my number one game on the horizon right now. For me, it's like that and Diablo three. Mm. But um, is that it for the interview then? I think so. Yeah, I think we're good. If you guys are uh, done with questions. <laughs>